how are we going to introduce somebody that doesn't need any introduction? We all know him so well. Uh, I mean, Alan has been a member for a very long time, and of course very active in the Navy League and many, many other things. And if you wouldn't want to ask any questions about nuclear energy, just ask Alan. Alan, it's all yours. Well, without further ado, my hobby of flying airplanes and taking pictures over the years worked out together rather nicely. And uh, as a result, I can make a statement that I think very few people can make, that I have legally explored all eight of the... Uh, of the main Hawaiian Islands and also all eight of the permanently inhabited Hawaiian Islands. There's a difference. After the lecture, for those of you who had figured it out, you can tell me the difference between the two. But anyway, uh, about, oh, I guess this must have been about six years ago, I did get a formal invitation to visit Niihau with, uh, from a guy named Keith Robinson. And uh, so as a result of that, of course, I took my camera along and uh, put together this program. So without further ado, here is the, the classic view of uh, Niihau. It's 17 miles uh, west southwest of Kekaha, Kauai. Flying over that strait, you can see uh, Niihau in the distance with Lehua Rock sitting off there to the, uh, the north of the main island. Uh, Niihau has 72 square miles. That compares with Lanai at 136 and Kaho'olawe at 45 square miles. Uh, the population at the time of Captain Cook was probably about 275, and that may, level was maintained until probably about 10 years ago, and that's part of the story. But from a historical point of view, a lady named Eliza Hutchison was born in Glasgow in 1800. She married a Captain Francis Sinclair of the Royal Navy. This was the guy who took the Duke of Wellington home to England after the, his victory at Waterloo. Waterloo. Anyway, uh, Eliza, Francis, and their three sons and three daughters decided to leave England and go to New Zealand, and they arrived in New Zealand in 1841. In 1846, Captain Sinclair and his eldest son were lost at sea. Two years later, their oldest daughter married Thomas Gay. So there is a name that has a local connection. And in 1850, daughter Helen married Charles Robinson. So if you've heard of the name Gay and Robinson, there's the connection. 1863, the Sinclairs left New Zealand. Uh, they wanted to strike out and go somewhere else, and so they thought they'd try the Northwest. But the notes say that they didn't like the Indians, the rain, or the mosquitoes. So they did a 180 and headed back into the Pacific, having passed in sight of the world's highest insular mountain peaks and route to the Pacific Northwest, they headed back to Hawaii. Well, and they thought they would buy land in Hawaii. They decided they liked it here. Robert Wiley, Hawaii Minister of Foreign Affairs, offered to sell them the lands of Kahuku. Dr. Ford offered to sell them Ford Island. The king offered them Niihau for $10,000. As uh, Keith said, it must have been a wet year because they didn't realize they were buying this burning desert in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> But anyway, so they purchased Niihau from Kamehameha IV for $10,000. And I will be referring to this later. They still have the deed, and there have been no further real estate transactions on the island since then. So anyway, eventually the three prefab houses were assembled at Nonopapa. Captain Gay sailed on August sailed to Australia, died in 1865, and as I mentioned, Niihau's population is about, was about 275. It's now down to about half of that. Eliza eventually purchased the Ahupoa'a Ahupua of Makaweli, which turned out to be the best sugarcane land on the planet. So they covered from one, went from one extreme to the other in terms of ag agricultural quality land. They built a new home at 1,800 feet up in the mountains above Makaweli. That's basically the general history of the island. 
and now uh, we'll go take take a run around there. Here's the map. There's your 17 mile channel, Kaula Kahi Channel. Uh, a relative of uh, Dan Williamson told me once that one evening he was standing there. This would have been the evening of May 30th, 1942 and saw the aircraft carrier Yorktown and her little task force sail through the channel here en route to the Battle of Midway. So there's a little connection. But anyway, there's Ni Hao uh, over there. The principal way to get ashore is to land at Key Landing right there. The Robinson family maintains a ex-military landing barge over here at Makaweli. Originally, they communicated by signal fire, but now they have all sorts of radios and cell phones and that sort of thing. The highest peak on the island is right there at 1,281 feet. There's that one cliff-like protuberance right along there. Key Landing, as we'll see shortly, is right there. And there's the whole lay of the island. And Kawaihoa Bay is down there at the southern tip. So we'll go down there. We'll cover the whole island. Coming in over Lehua Rock, Kiki Landing is in the uh, distance there, right over there. We will come in right over Kiki, there's Kiki Landing, with their little mountain range in the background. Because it's only 1,280 feet high, it is not a very good cloud collector, even though it has produced a small cloud, as you can see right here. So hence, as Keith describes, it is a burning desert in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. We're flying right over Kiki Landing there. It's a beautiful reef system here. Obviously, there's not much to compete with it. We're coming right up against the lava rock formations there. You can see that at one time there was a volcano that produced the core of what today is Niihau. And we go flying down that little line of cliffs, looking back at Lehua Rock and Kiki Landing right there. Okay, we flew right around there. We'll turn that point. We'll now work our way down the coast here to Kawaihoa Bay. Looking uh, southwest in this particular view. Uh, this is a, an attempt to do some fish farming there at the uh, edge of one of their dry lakes, which apparently did not work out. You'll notice the, the one bit of vegetation that seems very comfortable over there are kiave trees. When I was over there, it was a very wet day. Keith Robinson kept commenting to that effect, and the dry lakes weren't dry. <laughs> and so this is uh, the major dry lake right here after uh, several days of rain. Okay, we're all the way down at the southwestern tip, Kawaihoa Point, looking back up. And, of course, from uh, uh, we first came in over Kii Landing on the other side of the mountain range and came around this point and worked our way down the coast to the southwestern tip. We have landed there. That's The Robinsons now maintain a helicopter because, you know, in case there's a medical emergency or anything like that, and they, they still have the landing barge to get, you know, supplies, gasoline, freight vehicles across to Kii Landing. But... They help pay for this helicopter. It is possible to legally visit Niihau these days. It ain't cheap because they have a real problem with wild pig and wild goat on the island. If you, uh, they will arrange for hunting safaris, and uh, you know daytime hunting safaris, and so this is how you are delivered and retrieved from your Niihau hunting safari. And there's our host, of course, Keith Robinson. Now, that's his trademark, that uh, hard hat. Yeah, that's always Keith's uniform of the day, if you will. It was windy as the devil. This is your photographer and our helicopter pilot. And you'll know, notice in this picture we're both literally leaning into the wind. <laughs> and that's looking down at the bay. Of course, uh, you know, this kind of weather, you get a pretty good surf running down there. This is the problem all throughout Hawaii, especially in beaches that are not maintained. And of course, Niihau being uh, 
uh, completely isolated. Nobody can go. It's very difficult to go down and stay ahead of all the trash and floats them and jets them that blows in from the North Pacific. They get, I guess, a big wave knocks it off uh, freighters and it all collects down here. Keith is very concerned about the, what this might do to to injure their monk seals. And you'll notice there's a bunch of monk seals. Uh, sunbathing there on the beach behind him and that's Keith picking up some of the worst pieces of uh, trash and moving them inland. And there's a seal taking a sun bath on the beach. You'll notice that uh, all that garbage on the beach could, could injure a seal if it wasn't careful. Another nice shot of a seal taking in a sunny siesta that day. And here's my host that introduced me to Keith, Phyllis Paul. She gave, did one of the first video programs on Niihau. And so she asked if I'd like to come over and be her spear carrier, and that was a pretty easy time to say yes. So looking back up the coastline, that's the line we just flew down from right, right near Kawaioa Bay. Well, we're going to get back in the chopper now and continue on up the west coast of the island. And this is a good time not to have an engine failure. Swinging around the southern tip of the island. Now looking up the, uh, the uh, northwest coast of the island from the southern tip. And from high up in Kokei, as you look down to Niihau, you can see the remnant of this old spatter cone down at the uh, southwestern tip of the island from the uh, up in Kokei on Kauai. Okay, we're going to we're down here. We're going to work our way up the coast here, past Kiekie and Nunapapa, and the main uh, town over there is Pu'uvai, and then we'll head on up here to opposite Lihua Rock on the north tip of the island. Okay, flying up the northwest coast now, there's a nice uh, stretch of beach right there. The town of Pu'uvai is right over here. There's another general map showing the landing at Nonopapa. For many years when you came ashore at Niihau, you usually came ashore either at Nonopapa or Kie Kie. Kie landing's right up here, the highest point is right there. And you can see the dry lakes listed. Okay, we're down there at Kie Kie. Uh, the chopper is parked right over there in the distance. We walked over here to, because this is a favorite hangout of the seals. If you're going to come over with me on the chopper and you want to walk down to the beach, you will not wear a white shirt. And, you know, when you go to Niihau, you always say yes when Keith hands down those kind of edicts. He has a belief that the white shirts may disturb the seals. As he points out, he says we have 10% of the island's beachfront and 85% of the Hawaiian monk seal population. And he says if you inspect our monk seals, you will notice very few of them have wounds from shark damage. And he says also you will notice that practically none of them have little metal tags in their ears or whatever because we do not allow people to come over and tag our seals. And he says, we don't know for sure, but maybe the flashing metal seals may attract the sharks. But anyway, our, uh, our monk seals over here are a pretty happy group, and they try to keep it that way. This, this one is obviously feeling no pain, uh, sunbathing in the, <laughs> right there on the beach. 